Good afternoon, one with everyone. Uh, let's see, Roger, Shane, Dr. Bob. Uh, well, today the wires changed for a wee bit. It's pretty bit cold today, but I still have the door open in the shed. It's too, still too warm. Uh, so we are going to uh, tackle a, a nice piece of uh, free wood. <laughs> Free wood. I don't know what the wood is. Uh, I got it some time ago and it's been laying out my log pile. So I went out there this afternoon or this morning there and brought it in and cut it. So uh, Rand's here. I'll just bring him in and we can all say hello. There he is. Oh. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome on <coughs> to Paul Wood Tony Home. So I'll make a start, I think. And uh, good job, Brian. You can do uh, any questions to me and I will tell me who's no coming problem. in. All right, so I'll we'll, switch you out yeah, of the way. Thing. That's a good idea. Stick me in the background, right? Who wants to look at me? I want to look at your wood tongue, right? Okay, let's see. Right, I have a nice piece of log here, as you can see. I don't know what the timber is, uh, it's nine inches by four inches, four inches thick, nine inches long. It's a bit of a crotch. Uh, there's a limb coming out here somewhere. So we're going to make some sort of a bowl out of it. Uh, I don't have any plans to do any other things to it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> I'll not commit myself to it, you know. Uh, sometimes. Well, let's just see what develops, eh? <laughs> it uh, talks to you and tells you, mm -hmm. ah, yes, Paul, you can do that to me and so on. So. Safety is all this. This is on a face plate ring. Uh, just bringing up the tail stock. <clears throat> just to, cause I can. And uh, why not use it? Use everything to your advantage. Uh, make sure your verbal speed's turned down if you have verbal speed on your lathe. Uh, or the best way to check it, this is out of balance. So if you're doing any out of balance work, Put a, your belt down to a lower uh, setting and try and spin it. And if it's spinning okay and not jumping around your workshop, then that's good to go. But if you have variable speed, just turn the speed down and give it a wee spin and see what you get. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, 650. That's about the, the most I can get that to two. So I'm just going to move a tool rest in a wee bit further. Don't want to hang a banjo over over the bedways too much because this is a big piece of wood and you're putting the stress right down through your tool post. And I've seen many uh, banjos breaking because uh, they've been too far out. So anyway, that's what I have to say on that. So Brian will tell me who's in and oh, any well. questions, we'll, we'll, uh, well, well. Uh, right, I'm just going to get my face shield on because Doug had a, a, a near, a near miss last week when his bowl exploded and he was uh -huh. finishing it. Yeah. I believe must, uh, uh, Mark Beckett had a near miss as well the other day. Yeah, I've seen that. And ter Terry almost had one last night. He's, uh, his piece was a bit cracked and not very well held together, so face shield is always good, particularly when you're roughing out. Once you've got your piece into, into round and it kind of looks uh, sound enough, yeah, well, up to you after that, I suppose. So today we have uh, Dr. Bob all the way from uh, Detroit, Michigan. This is uh, having to finish a man for his neighbor's dog that started last night. Good luck with that, Bob. Uh, Shane Hurst is in. Clint at Wood Dancers. We have Roger Kent. Todd from Glen Clove. And Cove. Not Clove. <laughs> Cove. And Robert Brockwood is in. Roger Kent. Jennifer's Crafting Creations. Good afternoon, Jennifer. Malcolm Douglas. Somebody dodgy. 
Dodds, Chris Dodds, is he in tonight? Let's all Chris Dodds is in today, Chris. So don't be scared to move your tool rest in because uh, you don't want to overhang your tool rest with a tool too much. Because you can go grab it and the next thing you'll pull it out of your hand. So just keep that in mind. The closer you can get the support for the tool, the better it is. Two or three mil is perfect. And it also stops your finger getting caught in there. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a French of wood turner is in. Good afternoon, Gerard. Hi, Gerard. Welcome, everyone. Well, we've got 20 people watching currently. Very good. Good job, guys. So, we turned meant to be a nice hobby. It's not meant to be a bit torture. So, <laughs> just take it easy. And uh, I know I, uh, I'm, I'm one for talking. I, I sort of have one speed and I find it hard to slow down, but I'm trying to slow down a yeah. wee bit. Good. You know. Yeah, slow down and enjoy the hobby. That's, that's yeah. the whole deal. I mean, if you're a production tunnel, yeah, fine, you need to get on with it and if you have 300 spindles to get out in a week, you need to be getting out. But if you're just doing it for fun, why not take your time and have some fun? Just stop that. I felt a wee bit of bark come off and hit me in the leg there. Now it's just coming off where that crotch is. Coming, it, coming right around the crotch piece. Yeah. Sometimes can be quite loose in there. It seems quite tight. I was going to take the bark off and then... No, it seems to be holding on quite, all right there. Hold on, okay. It'll be kind of wrinkled and stuff in, in where the crotch piece was. It's kind of folded into itself. So you may lose it in there. And a couple of squatters in it this morning when I lifted it. <laughs> you did not, didn't you? <laughs> I had to vacate them, Mr. Spiders. <laughs> oh, the spiders are okay. Yeah, there was no worms, like, uh, just wee spiders. Oh, Brian, with the wise and Critters. Right. Good afternoon, Brian. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Gotta speak in French again. It's bonjour, Brian. Bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah, I think Robert Brock was just tipped in. He says, no point in having that hobby if you don't enjoy it, right? You're 100% right. It's, it's supposed to be fun, right? It doesn't need to be torture. <laughs> nope. It's meant to be a good uh, hobby. Mm -hmm. right. That's why I quit playing golf. See if I can get the speed a wee bit more because uh, it'll help me with the cut because of a lot of our plan round there with the. Mm. Let's see. I might start benching all over the place. Oh. <laughs> right, I've got it up to some Sunday. Good. So, Jared says uh, spiders, you should see the cobwebs in my shed. Mm. Yeah, I have a theory about spiders. If you don't have enough ventilation, you'll get spiders. And if you don't clean, you'll get cobwebs. Mm. Particularly in, in stables. If you've got a horse stable and you can see cobwebs, there isn't enough ventilation in the stable. Tori Glencove says, Mark Twain said, uh, Golf is a good walk spoiled. No, well, that's true too. Although it was quite good when I was uh, just beginning and it was, it was a learning curve. But once you kind of get a bit of a mastery of the thing, it, uh, it lost its appeal. So I just kind of gave up on it. I'm going for two rest again. <clears throat> starting to yeah. get this flat bit now, just this big bit and a wee bit here. Uh, we'll see if I can keep most of the shape. We'll see how it goes. I keep some of the lumpy bits on it, are you? Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like bows, the lumpy bits, eh? Huh? The professor has joined us. Good afternoon, professor. Good afternoon. And Jerry says that was too often he uses the vacuum cleaner, or the hoover, he called it, for taking out the cobwebs. Especially on the ceiling. 
Well, it's kind of hard to reach them on this one. I just get a brush shaft. Run right now. Yeah, you use the brush shaft. I hate getting them in the face. See when you walk under your shed? And ah, I know. Oh, I hate that. And you don't know if the wee creepy crawlies crawling all over you. Yeah, he might, he might be, uh, might be still attached. I tell you, mate. <laughs> you're, you're, you're okay in this country, Paul. There's no spiders with great big teeth in this country. Now, in Australia, that's a different ball game. Yes, it is. Okay. It would, it would appear that everything in Australia is trying, either wants to kill you or is trying to kill you. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> We're good here. We don't even have snakes. Except those that people have imported. Just move it to the rest again. It just needs an angle changed and a wee bit. Just to bring me it. A bit closer to this far end of it. Seems to be all right. Mm -hmm. Just change that to overhead, and that's going to play out now. Uh, just bear with me. Chris does. Chris uh, does. He's saying that in Australia, they say you're always within one meter meter of a spider. Mm, I think you'd have to go and live in the water. I'm not afraid of spiders, but I don't protect them. Either. No. They're just invading your private space. <laughs> mm hmm. Still a good bit there to come out. Mm. I think you'll lose most of that bark, I think, by the looks of it. Yeah, well, we'll probably, we'll see. Uh, once I get the foot sorted out in this and this brought around a wee bit more, we'll remove some of that bark here. Mm. Uh, the only far flat is this one with that one. So we'll get those brought around, see where it, it ends up. <clears throat> see what's left. We'll see what's left. Uh, Jennifer says, what are we making today and what the wood is? Well, we're not sure what the wood is. I have a hunch the wood was free. Uh, it, it could be sycamore. Yeah. Uh, it could be... But the shavings look a bit dark for, for sycamore too, but uh, I'm not sure. Um, and Paul is making a bowl of some description. We're not 100% sure of the style of the bowl either, but we'll get there. It's, it's a crutch piece. It's got a limb coming out of one end of it, so... We're just going to see what it uh, dictates doing to it. Just take them more off the top end of this to see if I can get this uh, flats out of it. Just stop and have a wee look. Uh, they're coming out just a wee bit there. And there, so it's hmm, it's progressing. We'll see, we'll carry on. I want to keep it as big as I can. Oh, Wesley Han has joined us, and Robert has said, sitting here is a huge lump of birthday cake. Delicious, he says. I'm just after my lunch, I only had a ham salad sandwich for my lunch today. I'll be on that. Um, can we drop the camera down just a fraction, Paul, so we can see more of the tool? Oh, uh, uh, that'll, yeah, that's that'll right. do. Uh, yep, perfect. Um, that was a question from a chap, by the way. Uh, I did say Wesley Hannah was in. Hi, Wesley. 
So we're just using the wing of the bull, the bull guides, to bring us round on the pool cut. Let's see where we are now. It's an effective cut for a moving number. Yeah. I think this is a wee bit green on it. Seems to be a bit damper. Hmm. Not bad. Right. Yeah. Like turning uh, down. I like turning wet wood. Roy the boys in. Good afternoon, Roy. Just uh, making my tannin. Just jumping a wee bit on me where this uh, crutch is or that void in it. Lewis has joined us, the Clondike Craft Craftsman. Welcome along, Lewis. Welcome along, Lewis. So, we've got that to the right, there's still a wee bit there and a bit there. Uh, if we can get this bit to come in, mm. I think we'll keep most of that. We'll still have a little bit of that left. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just. Are you going just, around the top of the bow in a bit or just? Uh, uh, I think I will. I'll fold it over a wee bit mm -hmm. and see if I can get a, a, a complete rim right round. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Maybe, might lose that nice and clean. Oh. You can hear that uh, branch inclusion kicking your tool out. Yeah. So three years bull gauge. Three years bull gauge. Stop again. Have an RV look. That's round. So there's that gap. And there's mm -hmm. where the crotch is and the branch. And there's the where is the horse head? Well, that is it. Yeah, it's come, that's come down quite a bit. Yes. So we're almost there. See if we can bring that wee bit down a wee bit more. Wee it's bit nice right there. Nice of figure in with that crush piece is. Yeah. So just bring that around a wee bit more. It's kind of heading towards the calabash kind of shape. Right, the boy's in his workshop. He's making more tea lights for his craft fair on Saturday. Good man, right? I hope he has more luck than I did on Friday night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I showed him one mushroom. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Shocking. Uh, oh, well, it happens. It does, yeah. It does indeed. Right. I think I'm going to need to take a wee bit more of that. Let's see if we can clean that up. I don't know if it goes right down. There's sort of a crack there. I don't, you can see it there in the camera. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just there. But I think that's where the, where the branch was coming out. It, it's not really a crack as such. Is there, is there a nice bit of spalting happening in that as well? I think there is, Brian. Uh, oh, down just here. that crack is down at the bottom there. Right? There we go. Yeah. Seems to be anyway. Nice color there, just in the sand of it. Yeah, we've got the pit right there too, so it's going to crack. Uh, <laughs> the professor says, uh, has anyone been to the Chestnut uh, Weekender um, before? It's in Manchester in August, and I was thinking of going. I think you should go. Um, it's, it's usually a very good weekend, I have to say. Uh, and I have never been, but I've had good reports from people who have been. And it always seems to be well supported, and they have good demonstrators. So it's well worth the effort, I think. Vinnie Charlton is in. Hi, Vinnie. 
Not long, Danny. Uh, no, Jennifer. So Jennifer's asking, have I ever in labour engraved hornbeam? I have not. I can't say I have. I don't think I've actually turned a piece of horn beam yet. Right, just flatten that a wee bit out. We'll put our dovetail on for the jaw. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get it sanded. Uh, we might might turn it around again and take a wee bit more. I want to get the front round and see uh, what it happens on the front side mm -hmm. before I make any decision. But I'm just uh, going to clean this up. Robert's enjoying his cake. Good man, Robert. Slight dovetail. Right, that should be enough for that. Excuse a handy tool for doing that job. Yeah. It's also handy for opening tins. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> uh, uh, most people some... say, what do you use your screw for? Ah, it's great yeah. for opening the tin lids. <laughs> yep. Open the polish right. tins. I'll put a wee bit of dust extraction on here and give us a wee sanding. So Jennifer says that Mark asked her to ask me about the horn, uh, lasering horn beam. What is he trying to do, Jennifer? What is it, a flat piece or a, a bowl or what is, what kind of, what is he doing? The problem with laser, uh, laser engraving is every, every piece of wood is different and it just doesn't go across across the species either. It's, uh, it can be different uh, within a species. So if you, two, di two different bits of like sycamore, for example, could be totally different and then need um, different power and speed sense. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so it's, uh, it's all to do with the moisture level and the density of the wood as well. So. It's quite hard just to guess it. What I normally do is kind of turn, turn the laser down a bit and then see how it goes. Oh dear. He's laser, giving, laser engraving a memorial plaque. Yeah, well, you kind of have to get that right, so. <coughs> As long as he's got a nice stable laser and you can leave the piece in there, you could you could uh, start off light, see how it goes. Unless he has a piece that's he's cut off it or something that he can use as a test piece. It's quite difficult. I'm not a laser expert by any means. No, started earning. Although, man, although I know a man who is, so. Paul, Ka Paul Cavan is, is quite well uh, au fait with lasers and how they work and settings, etc. So. Paul, Colin of Wood Wizardry by Colin has just joined us. Good afternoon, Colin. Welcome along, Colin. Thank, thank you for coming over. Oh, I see you. 
Let's see. Get this sandpaper off this. Bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's quite hard to get sandpaper off those little Velcro pads. Yeah. Without ripping the Velcro off as well. Yeah, that's what you end up doing. You've got to be careful with those little sanding arbors that you don't get them too hot. Because they, they, uh, the the uh, sheer abrasive action of the paper generates a lot of heat. And it can it actually melts the glue on them. So yeah, when you're sanding with them, it's best to just take your time. Don't apply too much pressure. People, and people, that, people that do YouTube demonstrations and other demonstrations tend to go too far too fast with it when they're sanding because they think sanding's boring. Oh, the Lakeview Workshop is in. Hi. Whoever that is in the Lakeview Workshop. First name would be handy if we had it. That was 120, turned at 180. And Greg Alexander's in as well. Hi, Greg. Missed Greg coming in there. Yeah. Sorry, Greg. Da, 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 da. Two forty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See that? That looks all right. Hey, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Go I'm not going to sand it anymore there because I want to turn it around and start taking the inside out. I might want to change my mind and bring it back and okay. uh, round this over a wee bit more. Mm, that's fine. So, so we'll Lake see what it's View like. Workshop. Uh, Lakeview Workshop is a hobbyist. Uh, is learning wood, learning the art of wood burning and furniture repairs. Channel. He's got 414 subscribers and 53 videos. Very good. Just have a. So, we just sound the scenery on so If anybody's interested in, in uh, seeing what Lakeview is doing, there you go. There's his uh, channel identifier or link. And I'll just subscribe to Lakeview. We'll show it's amazing when you put some finish on. Colors just pop out. The difference, eh? Amazing. What looks was as bland now is jumping out at you. Ooh, I like that. I like color in that. Hmm. Still no idea on the timber. <laughs> <coughs> You're entirely welcome, sir. We like to help our fellow tunnelers and get some more subs and try and share the experience. I was doing quite well there for a wee while and then <laughs> sort of stopped. <laughs> Rise up again. That's, uh, that's just what's happened to mine at the minute. I've had five new subs in the last 28 days. But it keeps going up and then coming down again. It goes up and comes down. It's just, it's a weird thing. I kind of withdraw the sub, can't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if you look at uh, like a William, who's William Canny, who his sub just went mad. Yeah, it's gone he's, really He's doubled the size really of his channel in, in about three weeks. So we test the Yorkshire yeah. right on that. Yeah, Colin, I need to do some more videos too, buddy. In yeah. Fact, uh, um, uh, after next week, I'm taking. I'm going to take two weeks off and just get some videos in the can. I'm going to take a couple of weeks off lives and do some work up at the yard, and uh, 
do a few videos to get try and get ahead of the game. Don't do enough videos. It's been hard for me in the shed here. It's too too far too warm. Mm hmm. Well, I know. Cook, you know. So I have made one last week. That's the only one I made for a wee while. And uh... <laughs> Todd says it's not it's not the quantity of of, uh, of subs. It's the quality. Quality. And dear does told you quite right. We still have that bit of bark running around here, so it's quite bumpy in the hands when you're trying mm. to sand that and rub that Yorkshire grit in. So just be aware <laughs> if you're leaving any bark inclusions in your piece and that you have that whizzing round, you know. <coughs> Colin says he's thinking about doing more with resin, so that might bring in a few. Uh, I agree, it's been too hot in the little shed. Uh, uh, yeah, it has indeed, you're right. We're just not used to it, guys. Jennifer says uh, she can't get past 553 subs. <laughs> That'll come, Jennifer, just keep plugging away. Well, you're doing okay for 500. The subs will come. Uh, videos for subs, uh, lives for viewing hours. So if you want to be monetized, you need to have 4,000 viewing hours in the last year. And that's a rolling year. So you have to keep up, keep up. The... So lives give you lots of viewing hours. But videos, uh, short videos, somewhere between 10 and, or even sort of six or eight minutes on up to 20 minutes kind of maximum. We'll start to bring in some more subs. <laughs> so we'll give that a wee taste of uh, McChrissy says. Uh, yep. Whereas he says he hasn't put out a video as Pedro designs in about a month now, but his subs are still trickling in slowly. Just need to be more consistent. Yeah, people who are actually actively looking for subs are looking for something to watch, and if there's a, if you get a re if you can find a regular slot to put out your video, uh, people start to look forward to it and then uh, they, they actually can pick up more subs that way. Um, mm -hmm. Something I'm consistently bad at is putting out videos on a regular basis. Right. We should really leave that to dry for about 10 minutes, but we'll buff it off anyway. And uh, we're gonna so always give it our are the what did you that use? Was crystalline wax. All right. Just not one. I'll just buff it up lately anyway, because we'll get it turned around and yeah. see what lies on the other side. Yeah, the micro crystalline does need a bit of development time. There is no doubt. Hampshire's sheen high gloss is not quite so particular. Colin says, I've just got the six pin and drive centre. Looks like a good bit of kit. Yeah, it's not something I use at all. I don't usually use drive centres so much. I have the step centres, which are um, a multi-purpose tool, if you like. So we'll get this off. And it's on a this pit ring. Oh, Jennifer's been busy. She, she's trying to sort out her made me shop. I did have a made me shop. Um, I had it for, for an entire year and didn't get any visitors to it at all. So the made yeah, me thing didn't I work for a, me at all. I had work. one on that, see, for a year and I paid them more money when I got any sales. Mm -hmm. So I just closed it. Yeah, I closed the made me shop, right? I'd love to think about something else. Oh, I'm Mr. G is wood turning us in. Good afternoon, Mr. G.
so this is the next Mr. Chuck, and I've got the C jaws on it, so it has that wee grip around the top. Mm -hmm. Right, we'll see what that's like. Yeah, that looks all right. It's not too bad. It's pretty. It's running pretty smooth there. Jennifer was asking how am I doing a live tonight and the answer to that is no because we have the 360 Club um, discussion evening this evening and Terry is doing a thread chasing demo out. So Okay. A little bonus for us so I won't be doing a live. I'll be doing a live on Thursday, 7 o'clock. I'm going to bring us back a wee bit mm -hmm. trying to drop this out here. Uh, it's not quite level anyway, is it? No, it's all, all shapes, but we'll try and see what the. Uh, what do you want to get rid of that inclusion? Do you want to get rid of that inclusion? No. I don't know if I want to go rid of it or not. I'm just going to clean the face of this up to see what it's like, hmm. and then we'll decide uh, on a plan forward. Let me change cameras. Oh, good man. So the lid's spinning at 8, 8 50. So you wanna, your feed rate needs to be slowed down a wee bit as you come to the end of the piece. It's getting quicker. Yeah, the outer edge is traveling far faster than that, but the inner edge is just traveling at 800. So it isn't traveling very fast over the tool cutting edge. I think one more cut off that. I think I'll, I'll leave most of that. Hmm. Nice little feature on the rim. Oh, 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 oh. Doesn't like being turned up. Let's see. Where yeah, are it's, a bit off, it's a bit off balanced. I've, got, I've managed to get up to a thousand RPM. So I think that's, that's as far as it's going to go. Plenty fast enough for the a ball. Just trying to pick a nice cut up. Don't worry about that because that's going to be coming out. I just want to get a nice clean end on the end of this. Got a wee bit of a hump here where this is bumping the. Uh, you're, you're bumping it, uh, bumping the tool. Bumping the tool. You could try a little pull cut just over that edge, you know, just a little shear scrape maybe just to get rid of it. If you need to. Just to be, you can feel it with your fingers. Just where the inclusion is keeping that wee bit of from being flat. Mm -hmm. Bumping over. Let's see. That's a bit better. It is. So, I'm going to sand the outer edge of this here. Mm, hold on. Let's see, where's my flat nose scraper? <laughs> just uh, Robert just said, uh, I have no desire to do videos or live. Happy to leave that to you guys, but no better. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Not so sure we know any better. We're just, we're just mad enough to go for it. And Brian with the wife says, I'm hoping that sharing subscribers might work. I've made a gift. <laughs> or some fellow YouTubers, not tunners, and videoed it with a shout out for them. Yeah, good man. Well done, Brian. We should all be sharing well, uh, each other. Uh, that's flattened that now. Just using the flat nose scraper. There. Yeah. It's giving me a wee line. So I'm just going to mark that line. I'm just going to stay within the bark area here, inside it here, and make that the rim. Is that leaving all that inclusion, is it? 
Yeah. Okay, good. Let's, let's see. So there's the inclusion. Yeah, just on leave the, all that. The outskirts of it, uh, and we're just on the outskirts of the park, coming into it there. So I want to leave that where it is. I like, quite like that bit on the end of it. So I'm going to <coughs> change over my gauge because I've been using that one. It's a bit char on brilliant. We'll use this other one. This is yeah, that's quite a good idea, Brian. Let's not, let us know how you get on with that. How, what your uh, success rate is. So we'll just start hollowing this out. Yeah, it's still quite bumpy. Hmm. Seems to be more bumpy in the center. Don't know why. It's more. Seems to be quite hard. Uh, how does, it, how does that, it? Yeah, I see the crotch pieces see, coming in. The crotch is going right through that. You see, that's why it's harder. And there's different. The, the problem with the crotch piece is there's different densities of wood, um, and that's what causes the bumping. So you want to leave a bit of weight in the center of your bowl. Uh, more and so on big platters and bigger bowls. So you finish the outside. So the idea is you kick most of your timber away here and sand it as you go along and then continue taking on hmm. a wee bit more away from the center. If you take away everything from the centre, the outside the centrifugal forces on the outside start to flex the outside of the bowl. If you keep some weight in the middle, it kind of keeps it more centred, and you can work on the outside and the periphery a bit easier. And it won't flex just quite so much. It will flex, but... Uh, Luke, he's got to jump. I'll check, check for the rest later. It's looking great. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thanks for coming on then anyway. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to take this step sander out of the tool area or the tail stack. Yeah, it's always a good plan. Because I, I want to come around a wee bit and uh, get into that. Right. So this uh, bowl gouge has a 55 degree angle on it. Then you go in more straight to the piece. Mm -hmm. And just twisting the gouge as I come around gently. Just coming up to that mark where I made with his parting tool. Just take it easy. You don't want to skate off and ruin your work. So I'll take a wee bit more get, out of this. Get the bevel pointing in the direction you want the bevel to travel. And you should be okay. But it's always good to uh, uh, trick of putting your button tool in just to give your bevel something to rub on. But it is quite a bit harder here in the center. Mm. Good sharp gauge. I'm pushing on that quite hard, so I am, and uh, it's resisting, mm -hmm. so it is, just here, but it, it's cutting nice, apart from that, so we're getting, we're getting there, might have to visit the sanding station, or the sharpening station, I would say so.
bring us down a wee bit more. Getting very jumpy here. It's actually bouncing. Just check that pole and see why it's doing it. I think it's just there, Brian. Here with mm. the dark, darker wood makes a the lighter green. It seems to be there's a remnants of a knot here. There's okay. a knot where the branch was coming out. No sign of cracking or anything. No, the there's no cracking. There's no, uh, no sign of there's no are we like a wee knot thing. Right, we'll mm. try and bring this side wall down and uh, see what it happens. So I'll just are we happy with that easy. flat? Are you happy with the flat run that you've got? I just want to look at that in a wee second, Brian. Mm -hmm. I okay. see if that the rim's all right. Just before you take too much out of the edge. Yeah. I've just been invaded by a fly. Hmm, there is the fly spray. Right, I'll stop out and have a look at that. Uh, yeah, that's nice and flat. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy enough with that. Good. Happy enough. So we'll just bring the tool rest in a wee bit more. It's done a help in to some, have some nice <coughs> color on that piece of wood. And what I was talking about earlier, I'm a first starter. See this part of the banjo here, your post sits in. Mm -hmm. I've seen people break their, the banjo here. Because oh, yeah. if they get a real bad catch, some of the castings are that uh, brittle. They've just broke off, just snapped. Mm -hmm. Because your tool rest or banjo is way it's out. Too, yep. Yeah, you want to keep most of the weight or your tool rest down into the bed. Yeah. As and much as you can, yeah. That would help eliminate any mishaps along the way. So, the closer you can keep your tool to the tool post itself, yep. the better. But sometimes you have to go out to the wing, obviously. To yeah, get you have to go out to the wing. Stuff. Depends what size of tool rest you have, too. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people use the wee small one because, for that simple reason, it's just more stability and mm -hmm. for the tool rest post. Anyway, that's an hour. Usually I send a bit of information for you. Not useless, it's good information. So I'm just going to bring this on around here, and try and get more wall thickness. We'll need to clear a wee bit of the room here, to bring it around a wee bit more. <laughs> Todd from Glen Coves wants to know, is a wee second shorter than a regular second? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Is the answer. Doug Miller trying to say Doug. You want to go back to the other camera for us again? The tail stop camera. Oh, I didn't change it back. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> You're all right. You didn't miss much. Chris Todd says it's an Irish second, Todd. It's slower than other seconds. <sighs> Can it just tend to go with the flow over here? Oh, Richard Phelan's in. Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. Welcome along. Welcome to the Madhouse. There's 
didn't make it there. Let's see. Mm. <coughs> I'll just check the depth of that. <coughs> for the wall thickness here. So, mm -hmm. so I'm about an inch, more or less the same, same as the top here. The whole way down to here. So we want to keep that wall thickness consistent mm -hmm. right round. So I think with this stage, we can take a wee bit more of this centre right and try and bring that round a wee bit more because I can't get uh, a good cut on it. There seems so what, to be where all the problem is here. Yeah. Just be careful there. Where's, where's your wall thickness? Where the bark piece is? Just where your hand is now. What's your wall thickness there? There. Mm-hmm. <coughs> you don't want to be coming uh, through that. You, can see. you see that? Yep. Yeah, what is that? good half inch. Half inch, that's okay. Good you wouldn't want to get it much thinner, thinner than that. No, <laughs> uh, it's pointless keeping the, the bark, but <laughs> you'll be through it. Yeah. Uh, right. So, uh, let's see. So that's wanna... determining how thick your other wall has to be. I'm just going to sharpen this tool, guys. Uh, that's our gouge here. Just bear with me a wee second. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Brian with the way suggesting that you should try the Spanish second. It's usually, huh, man. You're pretty laid back too, now, Right, okay. Horizontal, some of it. Mm -hmm. So we're back on. The uh, 45 grind on this just to take this off. Hmm. Todd from Grind Cove says the best seconds are the one you're talking about dessert. Yeah. Ice cream in particular. A nice piece of apple tart. Maybe even rhubarb tart. Stop it. Who mentioned food? What's up, Brian? I said, who mentioned food? <laughs> I find it hard to eat when it's warm like that. Just want something simple. Right. I'm breaking this nolly bit where you can, mm, I don't know it. if you can see that bouncing. Oh, well, we can hear it chuckling away. Just tap it and have an hour we look to see. It's cutting okay. It's, mm -hmm, it's it not high. turning it out. It's just, just where that inclusion, where that uh, limb was coming through yep. the tree. There, that's all it's it just is. It's kind of where the branch and the, the trunk have grown together a wee bit. Yeah, so I think I'll, I'll remove the rest of this because I need to get further into it and I'm not getting any uh, enough room to let me sweep that round. Trying to keep that consistent thickness on the bottom. I like to leave my bows a little bit heavier in the bottom. Kind of makes them sit better, I think. Uh, makes it easier to do. Uh, wood wizardry. <laughs> Colin, <laughs> Colin from Wood Wizardry says, Is 330 pounds a good price for a second hand pro -aid? Yes. It is. 250 would be better, but 330 is a good price if it's in good order. What's that for? A pro edge. Oh, pre wet, uh huh? That's a bargain. Mm hmm. Snap it up. So, I'll just get my calibers here and see what we are here. I, were... I certainly wouldn't think twice about buying that, that price. If it's in good order, that's the problem. Yeah, 
because you'll almost sell it again. Mm -hmm. Right, so with plenty of wood here, there's still loads to take out at the bottom of this. Good. That's almost the three quarters of an inch thick at the bottom. Uh, you can see, where am I? Yeah. You can see, there's my caliper there. So a good, good inch or so as it goes around, good. it gets wider. Okay. And that's what you're looking at. So, no, right. Right. okay, I'm going to change back to the aura gauge. Yeah. So Robert has just uh, said he paid 380 for his. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah, 330 is a good price. They're near 500 in New York now. <laughs> yeah. Colin says, trouble is it's nearly 200 miles away from me. Hmm. Well, that's... Mm. <coughs> time, you, time you drive there to get it. Or uh, postage will be expensive. It's quite heavy. Yeah, just moving the tool rest in, in a wee bit. Dodgy has uh, went back to the seconds of the debate. He says, there is also a husband second. I'll be there in a second there. Mm, two hours later. Or a minute. Yeah. Just, just give me a second. Mm. We're just bringing this around. Just lost the bubble off the microphone. Right there. Right there. Those are nice cuts. It seems to have settled down a wee bit, Brian. Mm -hmm. Seems to have I think you got past the little knot that was in there. It's not as bouncy. Mm. Yeah, see how you're actually traversing up a little bit towards the top of the bowl. That's about the highest point there and then starting to sweep down towards the middle again. Which makes your cut a whole lot more effective. I'll just check that again. Check our thickness. Yeah, that looks good. To yeah. There, it's about maybe a couple more mil off that. Yeah, just just more or less here. This part where it sweeps round now into the bottom. Mm -hmm. I think one or two more cuts off that, and that'll. Yeah, it looks like you've cleared out all that inclusion and stuff as well. Where the branch joined onto the trunk. Snap that again. Have we been nosy at it? Right, I have a couple of ridges here I need to get out to. Hmm. I don't know if you can see them in the camera, just there. Oh, yep. yeah. <coughs> so, you can see them on the inside up the top left hand corner of the bowl. Yeah, so I want to bring. That's that's where the nutty bit is. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a bunch of pipe bad. Stay with it, you just take it in. You want to try and make that a single cut if you can. I know. <coughs> She's just left the ridge in there again. The angle on that, right? Right, I, mm. I've removed the, the bump, but I need a mm -hmm. better cut on it. So it'd be better if we can get a wee, wee bit more speed on that, you know, to help with the cut. Let's mm. see if we can run it past the, the vibration bit. There you go. Right. It is vibrating. Away. It is vibrating a wee bit, 
but I've managed to get up to 1700 RPM. Oh, quite fast. I just had to bolt. power through the the bit there. I normally don't turn much above 1200 when I'm turning the ball. Not back down. We'll snap that. Have things falling off the shelves here. The vibration. <laughs> <of that. laughs> right. Mm. I I think we'll we'll try the around no scraper on that outside wall here, just here okay. where it comes around. Yep. Uh, the transition right. point. Yeah, because uh, uh, <clears throat> the speed is doing nothing for it. So we'll turn the speed back down to a where was a thousand RPM and we'll raise the tool rest because it's just an ordinary round nose scraper, no yeah, no negative rake on it. You can feel it biting in the corner there. Sweep it along the bottom. I have to watch it don't take any off the side wall because remember about the bark piece. Mm -hmm. You don't need much more off the walls, that's for sure. There. Well, that seemed to. That's, that's a better looking transition now, you have yeah, to say. Yeah, that is. It makes, it makes dark piece of timber in where that uh, inclusion was on the, yeah. on the left hand side of it. It's lovely. Yeah. That's, that's really good. nice in there, yeah. In there. So. That's made a good job, that scraper. I'm going to take a. The rest of that away. Move that over a wee bit. I'll just be. Okay, I'm clear across the bottom with your 55 degree grind. Yeah, I think I will. Oh, that would, uh... Sometimes it's easier to just go with the tool that's in your hand. <laughs> that's true, yeah. I don't know about that, too. I mean, before we had gouges, that's what people turned everything with. Yeah. And it works. Right, and we're, back we've, to the 55 went, degree kind angle. Of went, yeah, we've kind of went full circle from scrapers through gouges, now we're going back to scrapers with the like say, carbide tools. So, um, although I'm yet to be convinced that the, the carbide tools give as good a finish as a, a gouge. Or are as nice to fit uh, to, to cut. I would only use the carbides on end grain. No, I can use it's one good on for removing that it, you know. Yeah, you can move you could use one on the inside of that bowl if you wanted to. Just to, to rough it out to get down to where you want it to go. Let's see where our depth is. Watch, you watch JP, um he does it he uses them all the time. For everything. He, he doesn't use uh, gouges at all. <laughs> Bigger calibers here to get around that. So that's me right around the outside. So well, there's a bit of wood to come off the bottom of this yet. Uh, you can see there it's quite wider mm. there towards the bottom. So it's still quite heavy on the bottom. So I'm going to progress from about here on, on, right around. It's, right. it's four inches deep, this ball, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. It's quite chunky at the top, so it's going to need a bit of stability in the bottom. There's not an awful lot to take away, but I would say about a quarter of an inch right. towards the bottom. <laughs> Give it nine cases. Whenever I use carbides, I reach for the sandpaper. Yeah, well, particularly if you're using um, on, on nice, good green timber, probably they, uh, they, they work very well. On uh, dried good timber, they work reasonably well. But if you get down to like spotlit timbers and stuff, uh, I don't think they work nearly as good. So anything is getting a little bit punky or a little bit spotlit, 
I'm not so sure how good they are. I have tried a few. I don't get the same feel. I don't get the same enjoyment, pleasure out of using a carbide, which is basically just a scraper. Um, and you hold it on centre. Just want to see how. So that... there's no finesse with it, really. Right. All I need to do with that is round that over with a scraper, clean that up. I think I, I'm going to let that be for the depth. There's only a couple mm -hmm. of mil on it from yeah. the, the rest of it. So we'll just raise that up. And we'll get our scraper in again and we'll clean that up. Just trying to get the wee nub first and just gradually pull that back. And it's hanging over too much. I need to put it in a wee bit. The closer you can get it into mm -hmm. over hanging the top of the the tool, the better. Yep. The better the tool supported, the cleaner the cut will be. And you can sort of more or less control the tool more. Just take light cuts. And if you're not getting shavings with your 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 scraper, it's not sharp. If you're getting dust, you need to sharpen it. So Colin has just offered £300 for that uh, Pro Edge. And he says the postage is about 15 quid. Well, the postage is not that bad. I mean, That's not bad. Day, 15 quid is not, not going to break the bank. That's still good money for Pro yeah. Edge. If you can get it at 300 quid, yeah, yeah. you're doing okay, buddy. So just... Can't they glide that long about them? So it comes around the side, the meat, the side coming down, and you just want it sweeping right round. So it's just a wee bit heavy here. So we just, it just Todd, isn't Todd turbulent makes, enough. Yeah, Todd makes a very good point. You spend more than 15 quid in petrol. Yeah. He calls it gas, but we call it petrol because that's what it is. It's petrol. Gas by the very name of it is is not a, not a liquid. So as ah. I'm bringing that round, I'm keeping an eye on this side because I can see the cut as I pull that round mm -hmm. from the position I am at. I'm just taking the time not to cut. And I can see the line coming around now. Good. Our friend Dave at Mo Valley Maker has just joined us. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Welcome along. So, you're only in. We're making a bowl out of an unknown piece of timber. And uh, I'm thinking a second more. Could be ice, maybe. <laughs> no, it's I not. Think it's, I don't think it's ice. No, it's, it's not ice. Not. It's, it's grain's not. Too close again for I think. Second one, I guess. But you never can tell. Bring it at all well, under one. Anyway. I'm not a weed expert. No, I'm not a weed expert either. I don't care. If it's free, it's free. And that's yeah, exactly. That's the most important bit. <clears throat> so that sort of brought that round. That's nice now. Just move that out of the way so that you can see it. It's a nice shape. Just powder that, uh, put thin that with a branch. But it's a crotch piece anyway, so it may crack anyway. But there seems to be a wee something here. Hmm. A wee lump. So uh, Robert, Robert, uh, Robert of the Broadwood has said, uh, I've just done some laburnum apples, pears, and mushrooms. They finish really great. That will do. A real hard wood and it takes a finish excellent super super wood Lamar. yeah it's better like you okay i think that's ready for sanding i'll get a bit of sand done to this 
még a nőknél is. Where's my Madrill? Madrill. So Dave is saying uh, if Colin gets his uh, pro edge, Dave has lots of belts as he bought some uh, some 36, 36 grit. 30? <laughs> to make rope. Jeez, 36 grits for to eat far too much time to steal off of there. 60 grits what you want for reprofiling. <laughs> you put it on and touch it and uh, there'll be no wood left. <laughs> no. 60, no, I... 36 grits too big for repro, too much for reprofiling. 60 grits yeah. best for reprofiling. And uh, 120 is what you want for sharply. Yeah. Anywhere between 120 and 200 is good for, for sharply. Much more than 200, you waste your time. Right. We'll just get the, You'll lose get the edge as soon as you put it on the wood. The record power recommends 60 grit for reprofiling the tools. We'll just turn the speed down a wee bit for sanding. Started it off with 80 grit, and you strike that on, Paul. Yep, you didn't seem to be it's, catching it. That's very well. It's just the way I was holding the drill, the, the ah, stone, okay. the dust up, just firing it out. Does that. Still a wee bit on the edge here. <laughs> yeah, Robert's interested in how much um, Dave wants for his 120 grip belts. You give him a call, and let you know, send him a message. Mike Evans, uh, Mike Evans is in. Hi, Mike. And um, Brian, Hi, Mike. what's your opinion of the ceramic belts for the Pro Edge and which do you use? I have never used a ceramic belt. I use the ordinary red oxide um, 120 grit to begin with, and then I bought myself a diamond belt. So I use uh, that's the only belts I've ever used: the 60 grit, the 120 grit, and the diamond belt. Uh, 300. Oh. Dave's actually not selling belts, he's just offering calling them because he just lived around the corner from them. <laughs> um, Robert Klingspore does um, um, the belts that fit the Robert Shelby Pro Edge at a cheaper price than Robert Shelby produced them. I'm up, uh, the Robert Shelby sell them at. So if, you're in, uh, if you need belts, give Robert Klingspore a shout, he'll set you up with a distributor. And I'm sorry I couldn't help you with the ceramic belts. And I just went went the whole hog and bought the diamond belt. Okay, I think that'll do when it's sanding. I'm gonna wait just a 
sealer on that. <laughs> Wipe that dust out. Dave says they, they can work out a little cheaper from Heritage Abrasives if you're buying in bulk. I also bought uh, I also bought a workshop full of tools, so I had a lot of resharpening or sharpening today. Good man, Dave. So I'll just seal that with here's the sand sealer. That's a nice piece of wood. That's a beautiful piece of wood. Dark, yeah, quite dark on this end. Not sanding sealer on it now. I know you it has the color of elm on it, but in places, but I don't think it's elm. Just clean that wee inclusion out a wee bit. Jared says it's time, time up for me. I have to go back to the workshop. See you soon and stay safe out there. Thank okay, you, Jared. Jared. Thank you. Catch you later, buddy. Okay. Uh, Mike Evans says, Brian, do you use the diamond belt for reprofiling? No, no, definitely not. No, 100% not. The, uh, the diamond belt is 200 grit. If you want to reprofile a diamond belt, all you're doing is ruining your, really? your diamond belt. Stick yeah. a 60 grit belt on and reprofile, and then go back to sharpening. What I do for some reprofiling is I do um, 60 grit first for reprofiling, change to a 120 just ordinary belt, um, and give it a quick sharpen with that, and then touch it up with the diamond belt after that. But I don't have to. You, if you've got a diamond belt, once, once you've got everything reprofiled and set the way you want it, you don't. You shouldn't have to reprofile ever again, really. It's just touch it up with a diamond belt. Yeah, you're just touching it up. Unless you drop, drop it on concrete or something. Well, that's always, there's, there's always these little um, incidents that cause a problem, or hit a nail or something, embedded in a piece of timber. I was cutting a yeah. piece of timber yesterday, and. Uh, I took a cut and I seen this shiny thing glinting at me. It was a, it was a lead pellet from a pellet gun, which didn't Sorry. affect it. It didn't affect it too any, but had it been a nail, it would have took a chunk out of the, the gouge I was using, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. Just removing all the Yorkshire crit. Just watch that edge. I keep forgetting about it. Uh, yeah. A hole in it. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a hole in there, right? Catch your finger very quick. You'll know you've done it. Yeah. You, you could cut your finger in there, okay? Yeah, indeed. Right, let me taste the Rick Wrestling Wax. Not... I just opened you that tin of the... Yorkshire grit there, and uh, mm -hmm. I got to, I was saying to myself, I had to bring those into the house and stack them in the fridge for a wee while. Mm -hmm. They're not very soft. It still works. Yeah. But the fact that it's soft doesn't mean that the grit has got any, has lost any of its. And ability. soft, and I mean that it's really soft. <laughs> it just means that you, uh, it usually means that you use too much of it. That's the problem. <laughs> it's too soft. So I'll just. Yeah. If it doesn't go soft, stick it in the fridge, right? It'll be fine. Yeah. 
It's not something we, are, we uh, have to wax. worry about too much, yeah. No wax is near like water. Uh, microcrystalline does, does that. The other stuff has got a bit more resilient. The uh, mm -hmm. high gloss, I'm sure seeing high gloss. Right. I'll do that. Da, 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 da. So I'll add that. Dave's having to go, he says up. I'm with that. I fell back into the background as I have to head out, um, head back and lose my body weight in sweat while I'm trying to finish the trim <laughs> on the cabin. Ah, good luck with that, Dave. Thanks very much keep, for coming in. Keep yourself hydrated, buddy. We're finished anyway, we're just buffing this up and that's this process done. I really appreciate this coming over and uh, tuning in. So Brian's uh, Brian's pointing out, like like I just said, some metals will blunt 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 the wood turning tool, but it's also worth remembering that metals like aluminium, copper, and brass cut well using an HSS tool and the carbide, um, and can be used in a design. Hundred percent correct. Um, HSS tools will cut uh, non-ferrous metals quite easily. So, just give the outside a wee. Thank you, Mike. Mike Evans says, thanks, Brian. I use 60 get for reprofiling, but was keen to see what you used for sharpening, as you always seem to produce beautiful cuts. Um, yeah, well, it's a diamond belt. That's what I use to, re not to sharpen my tools all the time. Oh, because yeah. they are sharp, it's just, it's just uh, if you touch them up often, it's better than letting them go blunt and then having to spend more time on the shop just just touch them up every now and again okay guys that's that's a project done for that's the day a nice little I'll bowl take, i have to tell i'll you. take the food off that later yeah uh, i might let that sit in that uh wax uh dry up a wee bit and give it an or wee coat but uh it's a nice bowl oh rob from couple of wood done just joined us hi rob hi rob we're just finished <laughs> so we're just finished mate <laughs> So you can watch it. We don't know, uh, Doug. We don't know what the wood is. It's a uh, free wood because it came out of the log pile. Yeah. Uh, the, the wood burner pile, if you like. All I know, are coming out of a garden, and it was a garden tree. So it could be, could be magnolia. Those, That's a, could be a bit of those hard magnolia. Trees, you know. But nice, so. uh, nice green on it. Nice colours. Uh, nice. Nice and chunky. Left the bark are on it and there's a wee inclusion here where the limb was coming through and the crutch in it so all I'll adds go. to the uh, all adds to the overall appeal of the bowl i think so that's it guys for the, the day and i really appreciate uh, you coming in and uh hopefully you can have a good week and uh we'll see you again See you tonight. If anybody's in the 360 Club, we'll see you tonight at the 360 Club meeting. Yeah, I'll be um, there. I'll be back. Uh, Paul will be back next Monday again. What, is that right, Paul? Just, yep. bring Brian, just bring Brian in. There you are. <laughs> Footering again. <laughs> uh, he's footering with his wee practice piece for the morning. Night. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing, a I'm doing a demo at the Ulster Wood Turners tomorrow night. Uh, first, My first live in-person demo rather than YouTube. <laughs> yeah. That'd be interesting. People I'm can do things on them, you see. I'm going to turn one of these. I'm turning one of these. We Saturn bowl. Which is a Saturn a, bowl. That's a nice yeah. piece. The bit that the bit that moves on the outside ring. So basically, it's a bowl with a captive ring or two. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Hey, dog. How's the hand? Is you okay? Yeah, that's a close one. Way. Yeah. Okay, guys. I'll say to you and. Uh, right. Brown, I'll say cheerio. I'm a Bye for now, guys. Okay. Cheerio, guys. All the best. See you all there.